This coming Sunday marks one year since the Itaewon crowd crush. On that day, Halloween festivities turned into one of South Korea's deadliest disasters. For more, we have our reporters Hong Yujin in the studio. Thanks for joining us, uh, Thank you. Yujin. Thank you for having me. A year has passed already. You're right, Tongmin. So I think the memories of that tragic night on October 29, 2022 still weigh heavily on a lot of people, including myself. So as a person who covered the accident last year, uh, when I think about the accident, the memories are still vivid. And I think this, is, um, this applies to a lot of people because we saw the loss of so many lives, mostly those in their 20s and 30s, which shocked not only Korea, but the whole world. So today, I want to look back on what has changed, how we're coping with the tragedy and what still needs to be done. October 29, 2022. Itaewon, a popular nightlife spot in Seoul, witnessed an unimaginable tragedy. A crowd crush resulted in the loss of 159 lives. One year later, we reflect on the question of what's changed. The absence of adequate crowd control measures has been pinpointed as a major factor. This year, director-level personnel from the Interior Ministry, alongside firefighters and police officers, are being deployed to areas expected to see overcrowding both before and after Halloween. Seoul City government is installing around 8,000 AI-enabled closed-circuit TV cameras. These cameras can detect and alert authorities to dangerous crowding. But there are still challenges. <laughs> There's now an emphasis on local governments to manage events that do not have organizers like the Itaewon Halloween festivities. But it's unclear whether every region has enough personnel and resources to do that. The impact of tragedy has been psychological, too. Over 7,000 individuals have sought counseling, mostly the general public after being exposed to unfiltered graphic images and videos of the accident online. Trauma can resurface any time in the future. If you need help, you can access free treatment programs at national and regional trauma centers anytime. Local mental health and welfare centers also offer various counseling and programs related to mental health. Back in Itaewon, instead of the customary Halloween festivities, the streets are calm, with some streets posting signs paying tribute to the victims. So this is the exact spot where the deadly crowd crush happened last year. And now, as you can see, it's now a place where people will be able to forever remember those who lost their lives on the night of October 29, 2022. Messages of condolences fill the walls. People continue to stream in to pay their respects. They hope something like this will never happen again. And whenever I walk down here, I always pause and stop and I pray. Avoiding large gatherings is just not realistic, so I think it's absolutely crucial to have public servants, firefighters and police personnel involved in crowd control. Since the accident, I've experienced some trauma when it comes to large crowd gatherings. Nonetheless, I believe that people heal through one another. My wish is for these interactions to take place in areas that are comfortable and safe. October 29, 2022 will remain etched in the memory. Those who are lost will be remembered by those endeavoring for a safer future. Uh, changes are being made, but still a long way to go and far from done. Eugene, what's the Ito and like these days? Well, it told me the area suffered a lot initially, but it began to recover. In fact, data from the Seoul city government shows that sales and the number of customers in stores uh, of the Itaewon area are around 70 percent when compared to before the accident happened. So when I went there yesterday for my coverage, I could see that there were some customers, but most of the stores were vacant. And shop workers tell me that's probably because the one year anniversary is looming. So the director of the National Center for Disaster and Trauma that you've seen in my report says symptoms of trauma can reappear as people start remembering the accident. And Halloween is just around the corner. Um, anything we should keep in mind? Well, this year, the government expects a large crowd in the Hongdae University area, which is another very popular nightlife district in Seoul. I also visited there yesterday, and I could already see teams of police officers and as well as patrol cars to really uh, work for crowd control. And one officer informed me that the police presence will be extensive starting today. 
And so for those who are planning to go out during the weekend, which is expected to be the peak period for crowds, be cautious in densely populated areas. And if you're thinking of dressing up for Halloween, avoid costumes resembling police officers or firefighters as they could disrupt emergency rescue efforts. All right. All those victims remembered and no more tragedies. Thanks, Eugene. Thank you.